I wanted to discuss kind of the information we had at hand for the coronavirus. Can you infect your, your pets? People are panic buying right now. That's where I think the real problem may lie. I think this is a good wake up call to get into breeding your own feeders. Hey guys, so you might notice that the lights are off in here. My sleep schedule is very screwed up and it's like 1am, but we're recording a video anyway because I think this is a really important topic and I wanted to put it out for Saturday, which is today, you're watching it. Um, but I wanted to discuss kind of the information we had at hand for the coronavirus and how it is going to possibly affect our pets and such and what you might need to be aware of. Uh, I thought, you know, with everybody starting to get into freak out panic mode that getting some information out there on uh, kind of the current state of things, can you infect your, your pets, uh, whether it be a dog or something, you know, that's a snake, uh, a reptile, something that we keep. Uh, can you infect them? Can they transmit to other people? Uh, what is the protocol? What are, you know, sort of uh, official organizations saying about all this? And what other concerns are out there that might actually not have to do directly with transmitting the illness, uh, but might impact you or your pets and your connection with them? So let's talk about that today. I think this should be helpful to people who really want to make sure they're doing everything they can to uh, stay on top of things. So let's get to it. So first, I think it would be beneficial to just kind of recap how this virus got started, since it really has to do a lot with species-to-species -species transmission. It was believed to originate in bats that was then transmitted to an intermediary source uh, at a Chinese open market, and that includes reptiles at, uh, as a possibility and a bunch of other different species that was then transmitted over to us as humans, and then we started spreading it to each other. Now, what's important to take away from that is it's kind of difficult for a virus to jump between different species. Once it's in a species, it can go more readily between different individuals of that species. But the hop from one species to another is a lot more work and there's more barriers to kind of break down. So when it comes to our pets, it's not as big of a concern as transmitting it to certain individuals, certain humans. That being said, it is totally possible. And the CDC, reputable vet organizations, they all say to take the same precautions you would take when interacting with another human if you're sick. Don't interact with your pets. There was a report of a Pomeranian in China that tested weak positive for the virus after the owner contracted it. Now that animal did fine. It wasn't exhibiting any issues health-wise and it didn't look to be able to transmit the disease back to humans, but it does show that there's a possibility there. It might not be as prevalent as human to human, but it can happen. Now in the description, I'll just throw in some uh, different links to some of these organizations that say what to do if you believe you have the virus and you need to go to the vet or interact with your pets. There's a bunch of information on that, so that will be in the description below. Check that out if you're interested. Personally, I'm not too worried about my own health. I'm young, I'm healthy. I think I should be fine, but there is really, when it comes down to it, not enough data to say for sure hands how transmittable it is from us to pets and stuff like that. So I don't really want to risk it with them. I would suggest not going to any conventions, not going into any crowds or anything. I know Tinley was canceled, but I would stay away from that uh, just for the safety of your pets and such and the safety of yourself, of course. On a different note, I actually find something else to probably be more worrisome than actually giving your pets the virus, and that's the accessibility of supplies. Just today, I saw DubiaRoaches.com posting about uh, reassuring customers that they'll have enough supplies for the foreseeable couple months and stuff like that. That's where I think the real problem may lie, because people are panic buying right now. They're getting everything, hoarding. Uh, it's not exactly what's best for the community, and uh, it's just really a coping method, but it could really be what harms our animals if you run out of feeders, run out of food for them. Uh, you know, I also go to the grocery store to get stuff for my Tegu frat, uh, and that stuff is all going. So I think that is really where you need to be concerned for your reptiles, more so than the disease. If you don't already, I think this is a good wake up call to get into breeding your own feeders. I do not think supplies will run that low for this virus. I think you should be fine overall, although I'd rather play it safe than sorry. I do think though that it is in your best interest to breed some of your own feeders. So if something else comes along in the future, another virus in another year that's much worse, things are taken much more seriously, things are shut down, you have a supply on hand that is very reliable. I have a Doobie Roach colony guide 
I'll put that in the top right hand corner. Uh, check it out. I definitely think this is a good time to get into that and just be prepared for the future. On top of the possibility of supplies and feeder items and such running low is the concern that shipments might be delayed or canceled for a few weeks. Amazon, FedEx, if things are shown to be transmitted via packages and stuff, people doing that stuff, uh, they might shut that down and then you might not have access to receive any feeders for a few weeks. Again, I don't think like feeders running low, that's gonna happen, but I would prepare for the worst case and not the best case. So that is something else to keep in mind. I definitely think these two things or the overall idea of people panic buying and supplies running low, that is much more concerning and dangerous to me than the actual virus. So that I would keep an eye on. I would not go panic buy though. Please don't go panic buy. Right now, the best thing to do is help out your community. Obviously, take care of yourself. Make sure your reptiles are good. But if you have some extra supplies, if you run a, co uh, a company that breeds feeders and sells them, uh, give a little extra. See how you can contribute to the community. I know it might not be in your best interest money-wise, uh, but being there for the community will really go a long way in terms of business, trust, respect. Uh, this is the time to be there for each other and not just for yourself. So please don't panic buy these feeders and such because then we're actually going to have this problem I'm talking about where feeders are very low in supply. Uh, be a community, guys. Now, before wrapping up the video, I did just want to communicate some of the feedback given on the American Veterinary Medical Association website about what to do in case of an illness, basically the precautions, stuff like that, what to do if you need to go see a vet. Uh, they recommend to prepare uh, for getting the illness by having someone else, identifying someone else who could take care of your pets while you're sick and in quarantine. Uh, they also recommend having at least a two weeks uh, emergency kit of food and stuff for them and medications that that person would be using. In terms of visiting the vet, if you think you have an illness and it's a non-essential vet visit, they say to just reschedule. If it is sort of essential and you're worried about having an illness, uh, they say to just call ahead to your vet, try to make some sort of arrangements where the vet can maybe come to you uh, and get your animal or something could be uh, mediated as such. If you don't think you have an illness though, and you don't think your animal has an illness, just go about it normally, you should be fine. That's what they recommend. Let's say you suspect that your animal is ill after being around someone who has the virus. They say to just call ahead to your vet and contact your local health official, whoever that is, um, and let them know about the situation uh, and they'll guide you on how to go about bringing in your animal, what you should do about that just in case for some reason they have it. For this question, I'm gonna read the response directly because uh, I think it's important to say this word for word and this is especially important if you're importing reptiles, which I know may affect some of you guys in terms of regulations. Overall, I think it's fine and not related to reptiles too much, but I'll go ahead and read it. It says, what precautions should be taken to animals or for animals that have recently been imported imported from high risk areas. The answer is any animals imported into the US will need to meet CDC and USDA requirements. Uh, basically at this time, there's no evidence that animals other than bats can transmit the disease. So you should be overall fine. Um, if an animal becomes ill, it should be examined by a vet. Uh, call your vet beforehand, basically what we just talked about to go through how they want you to prepare to bring that animal in. So I know I said I was going to read it word for word, but I think I summarized it pretty good. Lastly, one important note that it says is right now they're not testing pets for the illness, for the virus. Uh, so if you're looking for a test, that is not accessible currently. Alright guys, so I hope this video was helpful in getting across some basic but essential information on this virus, this weird time in history with your pets and sort of the protocols a lot of uh, these organizations that are monitoring this crisis are saying. Uh, I think it's really important that we understand what we need to do. You might think it's not going to affect you in some way or, uh, you know, you're not going to have to worry about that. but. Just, you know, be prepared. That's the best thing to do in life. Uh, it's a lot easier, trust me. I've gone into so many things unprepared and it was so much more stressful. So hopefully this video will help some of you out and just communicate some of that basic essential information. Okay guys, so I will probably see you on the live stream tomorrow uh, and then next video coming sometime next week. See you guys. By the way, I told you guys Destin had a pet. This was a baby when I put it in there for Destin to eat, and it grew up to a full adult female dubia roach. 
So now Destin and that doobie roach are best friends. Benefits of being up at 3 a.m. Just thought I'd add that little tidbit in. See you guys.